Hello, this is Andy, the GD Script Dude, with another tutorial in the series on making a Tetris game clone with the Godot game engine. Let's create a GUI. We'll add a new scene, a user interface scene. Change the top control to a panel container. Select a panel container. Now, this panel container will allow us to use other containers for the layout of the GUI using the size flags of the child nodes. Um, if we have a look at our game design document, we made a list of the elements that we want in the in this scene, starting with statistics and then well one column on the left will be the these things, the stats and the next shape and the various buttons. And then to the right we will put a grid for the shapes to fall into. So this tells us we probably want to use uh, an H box container to divide the the area horizontally. So we can drop our left and right containers into this um, H box. So let's go add our H box, create, and we will on the left side we will have a V box vertical box to contain the, the left side uh, parts elements so let's add a V box create and then to, on the right side we're going to have a grid so let's add a grid grid container I'm going to want a margin around this grid so it doesn't just bang up to the edges of the, the panel. So we will, let's put it in a margin container. Margin container. And we will put the grid as a child of the margin container. And also for the left side vertical box that should be centered because the grid's going to be quite big and this this will be smaller when we finished it so i'm going to put a center container center container create and move that there and put the vertical box inside the center container now we've got our left and right horizontally arranged uh, main areas so we may as well call these left and right left and right I don't know why I keep missing the first letter there we go and we might as well call this just grid okay and then the V box just shorten it to VBox and we can start populating the this left side box let's go back to our game design document and the first thing we want is the statistics copy and paste that name there and there's, these are going to be labels one will be the name like high score followed by a number level followed by a number so there's going to be two, four, six, eight, eight of these labels, and we can arrange them in a grid. So let's put a grid as the first child of this V box. So again, let's select grid container, create, and rename it to stats or statistics. There we go, and. We said we were going to have eight labels there, so let's add a label. There's a label, create and control D to duplicate it. So we end up with eight of them. Now we can go and paste in the names of each of the labels. And we'll cut and paste from our, our game design document. So high score, and to be quicker, let's go 
this the actual number will need to be you want to easily reference that from code so I'll give that the name high score and for the text just put some numbers in like something like that for reference one of eights it's down there now and this one just so we know what it's for we can call it high score high score but it can't have the same name so let's use an underscore for example and then we want the text to actually say high score for that one so we've got a high score and that and we see they're stacking up vertically that's because the grid has one column so we want that to have two columns that's better and they're quite close to each other space close so custom constants we can have a horizontal separation and just bump that up to something like uh, 20 say maybe that's two no that'd be maybe 10 like so and we probably want to do the same vertically so let's preempt that by putting 20 in for the vertical separation so the next label will be level so we've got level score and lines let's go and do those so again use our system of underscore for this the text is level and the name of this label is level and its text value will start at level 1 and this one is called score underscore score text score and this one's name is score and the score will be zero to start with and next was lines so, lines and the text of course lines again and the name of this mode is lines and we'll have no lines to start with and we can see it's 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 expanded to fill the vertical space and everything's centered in the middle and nicely spaced so the next thing in the v box is the is the next shape so the next shape to fall down will be displayed there so we can add another grid let's add a child node and do we want a grid yes we do create a grid and it will be like various cells okay for the grid container let's call it next as in next shape then for the shape we're going to add some texture rectangles there we go texture rectangle and we're going to call that cell and its texture will be this tile dot ping png drop that in there then we see it appear there so what we're going to do we're going to have eight of these so go control d so we have eight and they're all in a vertical line so give the grid two columns and that's how we would like to have them arranged okay these um these cells are a little bit far apart from each other so let's check the grid it's custom constant constants and let's change the v separation to one pixel so that looks a bit better and the um It'd be better if they were aligned in the center of this rectangular area. So let's um, go to the parent and let's add a center container again. So center container, create, and then move this 
next grid into the center container. Try to. There we are. And now it's centered. And we've got some strange spacing here vertically, so I'll go back to that one and change the vertical separation to six. All right, now separation on this, the outer V box is um, too close together, so I'll go back there and separate this more. So I think 20 maybe. Yeah, that creates a big, bigger gap there, which looks better. We're going to have some buttons next, four buttons. So control D, one, two. The first one is new game. With text of new game. The next button will be pause. Pause. Text is pause. This one is music on off. I'll give it a name of music and it's text music on off so the right grid that needs some cells and again there'll be texture rectangles so let's let's add a texture rectangle create and again call it a cell drop the tile image into it and we're going to have uh, an arrangement of these um, there's going to be 10 columns and 20 rows so that's 200 cells so that's too tedious to do that manually so I'll, I'll do that from the initialization code to to add the 200 so for now I can just add a few of them Control D and then set the columns, column number to 10 for our grid size. Columns 10, that's that. And uh, what's our margin? We added a, a margin container here, so it's constants. Set them there. We can just, uh, what should we have? So let's use a, a margin of 8 all around. Okay. Our left uh, V box is like the width is determined by the contents at the moment. And it doesn't look too good. You know, it's just, it's going to expand and contract as the score changes, for example. So we're going to, it's a good idea to give it a minimum width. So in the size, the uh, minimum x 200. That. Yeah, that looks okay. We can leave that at say 200 for now. All right, now the actual play area seems to be too big. It's expanded too much. So let's click on H HBox container and look at the size flags. They're set to fill, so horizontal uncheck fill. Now it's it's gone back to just enveloping the contents and expanding vertically seems okay now the actual background is bigger than the it's so huge for some reason so I want that to be more down here in terms of size we can look at the rectangle and see that it's very big so just do that for now change its size there and let's drag this around see what happens yeah just make it fit around the, the hbox container so i think that is the complete sort of layout of all the elements ready to be ready for some code to be added so this video seems to be becoming a little long, so I'll cut it off there and do a new video about adding the code, the one that adds in the rest of these cells and responds to button clicks and shows an about pop-up box. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!